Hey guys, what's going on? Nursery Gamer here, and welcome back to another review featuring the Bandai Wonderswan. So, for those of you who may or may not know, the Bandai Wonderswan was created by Gunpei Yokoi, the same person who made the Game Boy line. After he left Nintendo, he teamed up with Bandai to make this little handheld. And it was released in 1999 of Japan and marketed for about $50. And this was released in Japan only. We never saw a US release. Which is very sad because it's a very fun handheld and it has some pretty good games on it. But with all that little history out of the way, let's take a look at some of the features. And we'll talk more about the Bandai Wonderswan. So, here's the Bandai Wonderswan. It has an interesting design. As you can see, it has your standard layout. But then you can flip it up horizontally, or horizontal. you can flip it up vertically, this is horizontal. You can do it vertically for some games that support uh, this kind of play. But there's not much to the Wonder Swan, you know, just standard D-pad, B and A. Um, sound and start is right here, as you can see. There's sound and start. And uh, there, there is no headphone jack on this. You, there's a little port here, you could buy like a little like headphone adapter. But there's no headphones on this, so... You can press this button for a little sound, a lot of sound, or no sound, which is kind of weird. I would like a little, like, volume slider, um, but that's all right. Right here, you have the power switch. Flip that up, up and down. This is the contrast dial. This is a black and white system, much like the original Game Boy. Uh, up here is where you put the cartridge. Uh, here is the battery slot. The battery slot's interesting, so you push down on this little tab and pull it out. And if you do not have this back, you cannot play the Wonder Swan because the battery compartment is built into the back. So you just slide it in, like so, and then you're ready to go. It takes one AA battery, and it lasts 40 hours on one AA, which is pretty freaking crazy. And then the speaker's just right here. So the games for the Wonder Swan, uh, this, I was just holding this up for the Wonder Swan. The games for the Wonder Swan come like this. Uh, the contacts are exposed, which is kind of strange, but you put them in the back, and then you're ready to go. And as I said, some can play this, some can play that way. Uh, this game, Beat Mania, plays vertically. And the boxes are pretty standard. They're just your average small box that you usually get with a lot of Japanese games. And it says Wonder Swan up there, so you know which uh, system it's going to work for. You can't play Wonder Swan color games on this. But this is usually how it comes. You got a little card for mailing. You got the instruction instruction booklet, which is pretty cool. I like this booklet. It's pretty big. And then your standard game with the plastic. And then pull it out. And then you're ready to go. A lot of games on the Wander Swan uh, were RPGs and pretty heavy text based. So a lot of times it can be hard to find um, a game that's really not Japanese language needed for a decent price. I know that they released, like, Rocketman, and they released um, a lot of other platformers and some, like, SNK games, some, like, Street Fighters and whatnot uh, for the system, but a lot of times those can be kind of expensive because they aren't text-based heavy, and so those are much more in demand. But I'm going to turn in a game here. And let's see what we can do. This plays vertically like this. And then you can adjust the contrast. Press start. Yeah, so this is Beat Mania. It's just a standard um, rhythm game. It's not too bad. There's really not much to show on... The Wonder Swan. But, The Wonder Swan has some really good games. Some that are, as I said, text heavy, some aren't text heavy. Um, some of the top games for it are um, Klonoa, and then there's Rockman. Um, there are a lot of anime based games, uh, One Piece, and there's some shooters, and then there are just a lot of good games for The Wonder Swan. And they're pretty cheap to come by nowadays, uh, just the regular Wonder Swan. There's also the Color and Crystal. I'd probably recommend the Crystal, because that's the best one. None of them are backlit or frontlit, so that's kind of, you know, it's it's kind of hard with that, but you can always maybe mod this. You can get, it like, an attachment. And if you're looking in the market, um, I think it's a great 
uh, purges. As I said, they aren't terribly expensive. I got this at my local hard off here in Japan for like $16. Online, they're not terribly much more. It runs on one AA battery. And not all games that aren't he heavy text-based are going to be hard to find. And if they are, like, they aren't terribly expensive a lot of times. And so, if you're looking into the market to get a Wonder Swan, then I'd highly recommend it. But guys, that was my review on the Bandai Wonder Swan. So guys, this is Retro Gamer. If you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys back here with another review. See you guys then.